All right, we're up and going. What's up, guys? Coach O'Neill, Officer Coordinator here at Schlegel High School, back again with another video. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about, uh, as you see in the comments, the post and post corner, uh, along with the double post concept. Uh, these, these two concepts are uh, basically concepts that you can use if you want to uh, potentially take the top off the defense. Uh, say you need a you need a big shot play or anything in a, in, a, <clears throat> in that essence where you have a concept here where you have two concepts here uh, that can put the safeties and your corners in a in a tough bind uh, when it comes to far as making decisions. Oh, so to start off, I'm going to talk about the post and post corner concept. Uh, what we have here, and I'm going off the three routes first, and then the extra routes will be tags. Uh, I'll also do this out of the <clears throat> out of this this formation, and then I'll lead to a ten personnel. Uh, to finish off to show you exactly what the H receiver would do if he was at the slot receiver. So uh, to, to begin, play side, play side receiver, play side uh, flanker, if you want to call it. Uh, he's running a over route uh, or a deep, deep drag, if you want to call it. I, I was taught that you call it a, uh, a over route. Uh, some guys call it drag. Some guys call it uh, – there's, there's all kind of, of names for the concept. So whatever works in your terminology, uh, that's on you. Uh, but for the most part, for me right here, I'll just call this over route. So basically, you want to make this a 10 to 12 deep drag, all right? Deep drag. That's the first route on the play side. This next receiver, the uh, flanker, uh, excuse me, not the flanker, the split receiver, excuse me. This receiver will run a 10 to 12 corner route, all right? He's going to run a 10 to 12 corner route. And your backside receiver, the X receiver, will be running a 10 to 12 post. Now, the reason why we're doing these three routes, and I'm going to discuss these uh, a little bit more in detail. Uh, we want to, in, in the look, where you have a two-high safety look. This also can work in a three-high safety, uh, excuse me, three-high high, high uh, in a one-high safety look. Uh, say if they're running a cover three or, you know, a, a man coverage with a, when a, a free player up top. But in essence, we're just going to start off with this right here, and then we're going to lead into the one-high safety look. So with coming off of this, the reason why these three routes are effective in putting these guys right here in a bind is because they're going to have to make a choice. Obviously, with your students, this is a friendly reminder you that you have one minute to get to class. Obviously, on with time. your um, Pete, you have one with your receiver, your, your, your split receiver also, running teachers, a ten to twelve corner route. All right, what we're trying to do is this route right here. We're Fox trying to occupy this, this time, guy. All right, we want to occupy that guy on that with that corner route here. Backside, the backside post, the backside post would occupy this guy, all right? And obviously, you have that deep drag or that, that deep over route, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, coming across underneath those two safeties, all right? Now, what would happen initially, uh, at least what you want to see happen, like I said, in essence, what would, would generally happen when you have these concepts coming to mix, uh, this safety, uh, say they're playing some type of deep quarters or anything in that fashion, this safety should take that corner route, all right? Uh, in, in essence, we can just call. We can say they're playing man right now, uh, just to get the just to win on the board. If you want, if you want to see that uh, a too high man look. But like I said, in essence, you want this safety to even to occupy this corner route. All right. Now coming to the back side, you want this safety to be able to take away that post route. All right. All right. Or his eyes should be on that post route. Now what's going to happen? Obviously, if you can see off rip of the board, we want these two guys to bail. At least take away or take away our two our post in our corner. And if they do this bail correctly, you should have this guy wide open in the middle of the field running a deep drag, 10 to 12 yards. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the inside backers in essence, just because if you know uh, a lot of defensive coordinators or defensive line, uh, linebacker coaches or anything in that fashion, uh, when they teach their backers, all right. They want to obviously teach them run first, so you should step up first to, uh, to make sure that it's not a run, and then you'll bail back. Uh, so by bailing, that gives this guy time to get deep. And obviously, uh, at least the way I was taught uh, by guys, you know, you, you tell your linebackers to bail at least uh, no further than nine or ten yards. I mean, if they get any deeper than that, they're in they're damn near safeties. All right. So uh, by giving them a deep 10 to 12 yard drag route and running it across field, you have the middle of the field wide open. All right. You'll have this guy right over top, and as long as your quarterback can make a, a nice pass over that linebacker, that second level, uh, you should have this guy here, all right? Now, let's say, uh, in essence, should use the, the eraser here. Let's, so let's say we have a one-high look, all right? Uh, let's say we have something in this fashion where uh, this team like to play 4-4, uh, you know, anything in that fashion, just roll down the guy. Uh, so this, this would still work. 
why I'm using blue, but this will still work uh, if we have a look in this fashion, all right? So, like I said, what's going to happen if we knock out what we're doing here? So, obviously, these two routes are occupying the safety or the safeties, if, if depending on their one or two high. Uh, since we have a one high safety look, uh, I'm expecting this guy, like I said, I'm expecting these guys to be playing man or anything in that fashion. So, I'm expecting this guy to trail that corner route, all right? You have that deep drag route coming across the field with the steel to 10 to 12, uh, and then you have the backside 10 to 12 post. Now, what should happen? Uh, your free safety, since he's the middle field, he has deep court, deep middle, uh, deep quarters in the middle. Yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you that I got 50 in here, but I'll be doing everything. I I fix it. I figure I had you mixed up with one of the other kids, so you're all right, man. All right. I'll take care of it. So anyway, like I said, this this safety should have middle of the field, all right. So nothing should get over top of him. He should not get beat over top if he's taught correctly. So if that happens, obviously this post is gonna be taken away. Now, if that was to, if he was to take this post away, you'll have obviously these two guys right here possibility of throwing the ball uh, just off these three route combinations. All right. Now, when we get a little bit more in depth with things, we will start adding checks and, and checks and, and whatnot into that fashion, depending on what you're doing your own terminology. Uh, now we can start playing with these second level guys. All right. So, say we have a corner who's bailing deep. Uh, he's not giving us that corner route. Uh, this guy is kind of sitting with that bubble and kind of trailing with that drag until he takes away with the linebacker. Well, we can do some things where we can tag a route with our H back in the back of the field. All right. Uh, if you want, like I said, you can give him on a flat route by putting him on a flat route. Now, this forces this corner right here, depending on what they're playing. If they're playing man, if they're playing zone, uh, just by putting him in the safe, they're playing zone. If I put him in this flat route, all right, depending on what zone they play. Somebody has to be responsible for that, that flat that flat threat, all right? So being that being responsible for that flat threat, this opens up that base here. Girl, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hi, are you available to cover a second half of a seven dollar? Yes, ma'am. It would be for Mr. Fox, and he's in one oh seven B. Gotcha. So that would be about one forty. Gotcha. Your uh, ground's gonna go in there before you. Yes, ma'am. I'll take care of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. I'm on the clock. So, like I said, anything by creating by creating a tag for your H back to attack that flat that flat make yourself a flat threat. Someone has to be has to accommodate for that flat that flat threat. Also, it gives opportunity to open up that that corner route. All right. Now, like I said before, uh, if we were to put this in a ten personnel look, even in a three by one, all right, in a three by one look, you still can get the same concept. Uh, as if, if the back was in the backfield, all right? So, obviously, if the back's in the backfield, he's going to do a flat route. Well, if we were to put him in a trips formation, if we were to put him in a trips formation, he still can run that same flat route. The concept doesn't change. The teaching your quarterback doesn't change. Everything is fast-paced, and you're not, you're not taking extra time teaching material that kind of will take away from your core subject of what you do in your own offense, all right? So, by maintaining this, these type of concepts, it gives you, you time to teach your quarterback more about what the defense would do to adjust to this instead of you teaching your quarterback what he does to adjust to what the defense does, all right, because the concepts never change. So this is a look that you'll see out of a three-by-one. three, by, a three by one. Like I said now, you can also do the same thing if we was in a 10 personnel look, all right, the same thing. So we had a slot receiver on the back side. Like I said, we, we had the play side. We had the flat routes uh, on the play side. What would we do on the back side? We'll have him run a drag, a five to six yard drag, if, if you want to do that. Now, what that would do, that would occupy these guys, all right? So that drag coming across, across that occupies these guys, and that gives you a better throw to throw to that 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 over route, uh, depending on if they if you have some guys. Obviously, the coach uh, is seeing that we're throwing the over route, setting up the taking the post to set up that over route. Uh, they potentially heal just by having one of the backers bail a little bit deeper to sit on to sit. Under that, just in case uh, we throw the ball to that guy again, he can pick it off. Well, by bringing this this small, this short drag, shallow drag across, now these guys' eyes are instantly going to look at him as he's come across, all right? Their eyes should be locked on him instantly uh, to see what's happening with their responsibilities, all right? So this is just a quick, quick look of what I would use for as a concept for a, a post-corner uh, post uh, situation concept. Uh, another thing that I like uh, that – I think it's really effective for a high school level uh, is the double post. The reason why I like the double post, because that, again, this puts your safeties in a bind where they have to make decisions on who they're going to cover. All right. They have to make a, a, a true decision on 
who they want to pick up in order to take what they want to take away in essence. So play side, play side. We have a 10 to 12 post. All right. 10 to 12 post. Well, really, you can go 8 to 10, but 10 to 12 won't hurt because at the end of the day, we're still pressuring that safety. All right, backside. I'm going to take away the slot receiver just because I'm going to put him in the backfield once again. Backside, we have a 10-yard dig. 10-yard dig route. Now, since we have the one high look right here already, I'm going to discuss this, and then I'll go to the two high look. So since we have a one, one high look, one high safety, uh, this will be a good play to use because this puts him in a big issue, all right? This puts that guy in a big issue where he has to make a decision on where he's going to go for his, uh, his assignments or who he's going to stop. Obviously, when you have these double posts here, I'm expecting these two defenders to trail, all right, unless they're playing deep. If they're playing deep quarters, he still is going to trail when he breaks into the, to the post route. Same for this guy. So either way, I'm expecting those guys to trail because they're looking for him for help. Now, here's what happens when you're running these double posts. Say this safety sits on this post. We have a big shot play over top right now. He sits, he sits on that first, that slot, uh, that, that split receiver's post route right now. I'm, I'm telling my quarterback, you should go over top. You should throw it right over his head, right into the bread basket, all right? Say he plays deep. Say he plays deep and he takes away the deep post. Well, now we have a, a two-way choice with the, the flankers post, excuse me, the splits post with the backside dig. All right, so now he plays, he takes deep, he takes away that deep post. Now we can play with these guys, which is backside deep, because we're going to go right underneath him. Basically, these two concepts that I'm using, man, I want it, it puts a lot of pressure on your safeties. All right, I'm expecting corners to bail, is bail and, and generally it turns to man if they're playing cover three. Uh, since this past season, uh, we had a lot of defenses play either man or cover three. I've, I've yet to see uh, last year, I've yet to see a defense that came out and, uh, well, I lied, I lied. I, we actually had one team actually came out and played a, a, some sense of a cover two or a cover two shell. Uh, but mostly everybody in our league were either playing man or cover three. Uh, that's all we that's all we got. Uh, that's all we, we saw as far as coverage wise uh, for most of the season. Now, uh, just to get back on a little bit as far as tags and everything. So say we have this double post here. Uh, what we can do here, instead of run, making him run a flat route, because this is a pretty much a, a long developing play, and I'm expecting I'm expecting my line to do their job and block for my quarterback, make sure my quarterback back is not in, on the turf. All right. So this can give you an opportunity instead of having him run a flat route, give him a five yard out. All right. Give him a five yard out. And when you're teaching him this five yard, force tell him I'm forcing you to get the five yards. I don't want you to get past the line of scrimmage and then break out because then that takes away the whole principle of what we're trying to do. I want to get a five yard out, so I want him to get a little bit vertical because by giving him vertical, these guys got to honor that. They got to honor this step. If he's going vertical or he's sitting, what is he doing right here? So by pushing him upfield just slightly, uh, we can play with these guys' eyes and, and make him make a mistake. Uh, the out route again, he's he's basically our, our, our flat threat to that play side field. All right, that's basically that's all he is. All right, uh, he's a decoy unless your quarterback gets in the bind and he's like doing some Johnny Mazel type stuff. You know how these kids are in high school. Uh, when they're when they're trying to be playmakers, he can break to that to that play side of the field, and he still have a guy he can throw the ball to just in case he has a lot of pressure on him. Uh, same concept. If it was in trips, all right. If he was in trips, it would be the same deal. We're teaching him five yard out route. All right. Concept doesn't change. Concept doesn't change here. Now I will say it will change when we get to the back side. All right, and the reason why it's going to change, I'll explain. Obviously, we have our dig right here, right? We have our dig coming in for these two post routes. Well, what if what if we have these three routes? Somehow, they, they play great defense and they took that away. Well, if I'm in a 10 personnel, if I'm in a 10 personnel, instead of pushing everything inside uh, where my quarterback is, he can have you can have a little a little backside shot for a window if if somebody decides to take their eyes in the wrong direction. So, like I said, instead of pushing him inside with other routes. I put him on the wheel. By putting him on the wheel, somebody has to occupy that guy. All right. So, if, like I said, if the quarter, if the cornerback is playing cover three, he's playing quarter. All right. So he's gonna bail to the sense until that guy digs in. If now, if this guy right here bails and takes that dig with that wheel route coming underneath, we have a shot play right here and it should be a touchdown because no one there is gonna be covering him unless this this guy trailing. But even with that, 
I'm expecting it to be a race for, for a victory. So, like I said, in essence for these, like in this fashion of a double post concept, and these are the, these basically what I would do if I'm running double posts or if I'm running the post corner concept, all right? I want to pressure the safety. I want to put a lot of pressure on the safety and force him to make the wrong decision, all right? I want to tag quick uh, quick tags to it that allows my quarterback to have a bailout, if you want to call it. If you want to call it that fashion, have a bailout. Say our, our big-time plays, does our, our big shot play doesn't work out where we can have a, a throw a, – a hot throw. Uh, this is what I was talking. This would called in college a hot throw, where if you had pretty much pressure on the guy, the, qu- the quarterback can find somebody and get the ball out of his hand and take a bad play and turn it into somewhat of a decent play. Uh, so, just I just wanted to do a quick video, man, just to uh, give me my spiel on the double post and the post corner concept. Uh, these are just some some quick things that you that I can do uh, versus uh, cover three uh, with a one high safety look or a too high safety look. I know in, in, in some instance, a lot of guys would think uh, if they don't know, I'm kind of pushing uh, towards the air raid concept with the triangle effect. Obviously, if you see, you, I, I want to create that tri- triangle concept. And the reason why you want to create that triangle concept is the whole, the whole point of the triangle concept is to create more spacing uh, for your quarterback to see where to deliver the ball uh, without any fear of, of making a turnover. So I, I'm taking a lot of air raid concepts a lot of uh, wing T. I'm, I'm pretty much meshing a lot of different concepts from different types of offenses into one uh, with my own playbook. And the reason why I'm doing that because you can always have answers for anything, all right? Uh, and that's the that's the base of what I'm creating my playbook on. I want to have an answer uh, for whatever type of thing the defense will adjust. And when I'm saying the answer, I'm not saying I, I'm having a pl- uh, uh, over 200 plays in the playbook. I'm a, I'm a guy who like to play flat or play fast. So if you're a guy who like tempo offense, uh, you need to minimize your offense, all right? You need to minimize your plays in your offense so you're doing more teaching for your guys so they can execute, all right? Uh, tempo doesn't – a tempo offense doesn't mean you just have uh, abundance of plays. If you have more than 30 passing, uh, passing concepts in your playbook and you're a tempo guy and you're trying to teach all 30 of those things, man, it's going to be tough. Unless they're NFL guys, Division One college guys where – they're, they're getting drilled football in the regular for high school kids directly. I don't think that you can do those type of things. So you want to have concepts that allow these guys to, instead of, instead of thinking they're playing. All right. That's the whole point of being allowing these guys to play tempo offense. Cause they're out there having fun. Uh, I remember my time when I played high school ball, uh, we played in the spread and it wasn't really tempo, but you can tell, uh, the coach tried to play fast with the offense that we ran, and it was successful with the speed we had. Uh, along with that, if your team is in shape, you can fatigue a lot of defenses, man. You can put a lot of defenses on on the fence going into the second half, and then you can ground and pound from there. Or if you're a, a true spread guy, a spread team who likes to throw the ball around the field, either way it goes, you're putting pressure on the defense, and you're making them struggle to and have them to literally cover the entire field. Uh, which that's the whole base of the spread offense, all right? So, uh, as always, guys, uh, like I said, this is just a quick video on the post, double post and the post coded concepts that I use in my playbook. Uh, might not use those tags. I don't think I'm using those tags for the coaches who are watching, but this is most mainly uh, the type of stuff that I would like to use in my own spread offense. Uh, as always, man, if you guys have any ideas or if you want to put any inputs on uh, what I'm doing here or if you have something new that's kind of similar to this that can – Pretty much piggyback off this, man. Contact me on Twitter at Coach0223. Uh, you can always contact me on that in general. You follow me on there, man. We can talk ball all day. I talk football all day. I'm a football guy uh, through and through. So, and if you want to be a part of the show, if you want to create your own video and have me input it, like I said, just contact me on Coach0223 on Twitter, and we can get things going, man. I'm all about networking. I'm all about uh, networking with different coaches, and I'm trying to create a a sound base uh, for the spread offense to – obviously advance. So again, guys, I hope you guys had a great day. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I'm on the clock at school. Uh, so I'm going to finish the day off and then uh, enjoy the rest of my day and going into tomorrow. Uh, maybe the next video I'm going to I'm gonna drift away from football a little bit and start talking weight room stuff, uh, things that can uh, help your athletes develop uh, their body and, and their mind. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, like I said, guys, if nobody ever told you, let me be the first to tell you, you're awesome. Keep being awesome. Have a great day.